What is going on people of YouTube? My name is Picotio. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now game week 6 is fast approaching and it's about time I'll let you in on a few players I'll be looking out for this coming game week. But first of all, let's have a look at those games to watch from an FPL perspective. You know the drill, we've got 4 games after that. We have players, if I look down at the screen it's because I've got notes written down and also players there. Starting off though, games to watch. Manchester United vs Leicester, the early Saturday kickoff. Keep your bets well away from it because it is bound to ruin accumulators. I just don't know what's going to happen. You've got a team in Leicester which probably need another win to really say, you know what, we are back. But you've got a team in Manchester United who could go, you know, that could make, you know, four losses in five games barring the EFL which I'm not going to EFL Cup which I'm not going to you know go into uh, but it's a tough game it's a really tough one to call from attacking players wise midfield player wise defend player wise goalkeepers wise um, it's a real weird one so any players of Man United and Leicester could really be FPL gems or they could hurt you in the other direction. We've got Liverpool versus Hull. And that game picked out because it's strange. You've got Liverpool defenders who will hopefully be looking to get a clean sheet on the board. Then you're against Hull. Hull just somehow and I, I seem to get you know goals in games. You know, the only, I think the only game they haven't scored in is the um is the game against I can't remember. What Manchester United, that's the one. Um late goal from Marcus Rashford. Otherwise they would have got a point from that. I feel like they can get a goal in this one, but can Liverpool defenders finally prove they can defend? Who knows? Then we've got Arsenal versus Chelsea as the late Saturday game. What a packed Saturday. Eight games in total. And disappointingly they've only got one game on Sunday. But Arsenal versus Chelsea, that's a massive game. Big derby game. Arsenal inform Chelsea on on the loss. I don't want to make it two losses in the Premier League in a row. And finally, West Ham versus Southampton. You've got Southampton that have been steady so far, I suppose. And West Ham who seriously need to buck their ideas up. Really big game involved. And really you could see, you know, West Ham get capitulated again, or you could see an improvement, but at the end of the day, just four exciting games of a really exciting looking game week. Let's start off with some goalkeepers, shall we? I've got four for you. Four real strange ones. Starting off, Hugo Lloris has got to come in there. Spurs. They've got three clean sheets. The best defensive record in the league. Bar none. They are the top at three out of five games. They've kept clean sheets. They've got an away game against Middlesbrough. And to be honest, I feel like they can get another clean sheet, make it four. And we'll be mentioning a few Tottenham defenders um, when defenders come up, but Hugo Lloris still £5.4 million. If you're looking for that goalkeeper for clean sheets, Spurs look as if they're going to be that team this season. He's one of the best goalkeepers arguably in the Premier League, if not the world as well, and he's definitely worthy of your Premier League spot. Then we've got Claudio Brava at £5.5 million. Watch the review, because I'm pretty sure I said stay away from Claudio Bravo, but he's in here anyway. Um... He's in here anyway because I was really struggling for goalkeepers. Generally, apart from Hugo Lloris, I give you no one. Um, no one else is, for me, you know, getting at least 80% backing from the heart, thinking oh, they're going to do well. Because it's just a guessing game at the moment. There's been that little amount of clean sheets. It's literally just a guessing game. But um, Bravo comes in £5.5 .5 million. Pounds. Uh, they got a first clean sheet last weekend. They could probably get another one against Swansea, who are struggling at the moment, and apparently could look in a relegation battle this season. Then we've got Heaton at £4.6 million. Pounds. Burnley have a nice game against Watford. Do I think they can get a clean sheet? No, but... I did mention Heaton's probably one of the best bets for safety, which, um, you know, if you don't know safety and safety, safety is when you, you know, you've got someone that you know you can get a few clean sheets, like the De Gea's and the Czechs of last season. Then you've got safety, which is um, your keepers that are going to make a lot of saves, i.e. Jordan Pickford against Tottenham got four points despite conceding a goal uh, because he's made eight saves. Like that could be a game with a load of saves because Watford attacking threat is really potent at the moment. And finally, on, Pickford, Chuck Pickford in there, £4 million. If you're looking for a cheap goalkeeper for the time being until they get Manone back, why not be him? Crystal Palace have looked deadly and Pickford has looked good on his feet, so I can see him making another few saves in that game. On to the defenders, I'm going to start off with Seamus Coleman. Now, the last two game weeks I've said um, Coleman and Baines in the wrong weeks. Whenever I've said one of their names, the other one does well. So I've switched it around and then the other one does well. But I'm going with Coleman this week because he's 5.4 instead of Baines' 5.6. At least at the time of recording this video, it's worth noting. 
and he's looking good so far. They've got a nice game against um, Bournemouth. Could get a clean sheet from it. One. Um, two, Everton looked like one of the sturdiest teams so far this season. And three, going forward, him, him and Baines both look really good. Now, I'm saying Coleman because he's cheaper. Baines is also there, but he's on going to be, you know, whipping in assists, maybe corners, free kicks, penos. I don't know if he's on penos. I might be Romelu Lukaku, I'm not too sure. But um, definitely keep your eyes out for not just Coleman, but Baines as well. Then we've got Vertonghen at £5.5 .5 million. Pounds. I've mentioned Spurs look good defensively. And Vertonghen's the cheapest defender there. You have got Danny Rose at 6 million. But for me, um, Danny Rose is a bit too expensive. Get Kyle Walker instead, who's also injured at the moment. I don't know if he's going to be back for the next game week. Vertonghen at 5.5. If Rose isn't back, he'll be playing a left back. Got a chance to go forward. And that's always good. Unless Ben Davis comes in because Dyer came after. But also... The fact that, again, they are one of the strongest defences so far this season. Then we got Jan Matt of Watford. Jan Matt has got a nice, good game against Burnley, like I said. Um, I think Burnley will get a clean sheet, but Jan Matt's come in. Got an assist against Manchester United. Could fight with maybe assist, even a goal against Burnley. He's one of the best assisting set, um, right backs or full backs or defenders in general on FPL last season. Then we got Klein. It's worth a risk. Um, he's valued at 5.5, .5, I believe. Don't quote me because I didn't check this one. I always went on the heart. Uh, it might even be different on the graphics, so <laughs> hopefully I've got this one right. But Klein comes in. Last little game against Hull. I should hope that um, Liverpool get a clean sheet. But Arsenal didn't, so maybe Liverpool <laughs> maybe Liverpool might not get a clean sheet in the end. We've got Galloway from West Brom. West Brom have been not too good at keeping clean sheets this season. But Galloway, £4.5 million pounds is a really good bet because he'll be a full-back. Attacking down the wings, also getting back at defending, getting those clean sheets. Nice game against Stoke. Stoke have been really subpar so far. West Brom should be looking to capitalise on that. Maybe a clean sheet, maybe a win. Get both together. Good result for West Brom. And I've chucked Walker in there because I couldn't find a sixth defender. So I chucked Walker in there. He's the highest scoring defender. I've had him in from the start. And you should all get him in now because his price will only increase and increase and increase. He'll end up Alder Vireld's price plus more. If you've got Alder Vireld, replace him with Walker whilst you can. And uh, yeah, Walker is looking good going forward. Already got two assists this season. Uh, almost got three if um, it wouldn't, the assist wouldn't have been given to Deli Alley. If it was a defender knocking it down, that would have been counted as Walker's assist. So yeah, definitely looking, definitely looking vital. And let's jump into midfielders. Done it again. Waffle on the defenders. Haven't really got much time for anywhere else. So we're going to rush through him. Kapue, £4.9 million. Game against Burnley, looking good. And also, cannot seem to stop scoring. That's four goals in five games now. Insane. Punching at £5.5 .5 million for Crystal Palace. I do think that's wrong now. I've put that there. But punching anyway for Crystal Palace. Got a game against Sunderland coming up. Sunderland have been susceptible to crosses so far this season. Punchin has been grabbing those crosses. So... But two and two together, you get maybe a few assists for punching like he did last game week. And we've got Blassie at £6 million. He seems to be favourable for Ronald Koeman because he is, I, I did mention it when he joined, very much like Saidio Mane. And he's also grabbed two assists in his last two games, one in each. So he could be on for a third this coming game week. Payet, £9.4 million. How to better one assist each game week is two assists each game week. He's got two uh, in each game of the last uh, two game weeks. That's four in the last two game weeks. Uh, he's got a nice game against Southampton. I believe he could be on for another few in that game. Redmond, he's dropping in price. He's dropped from 6.1 to 6.0. But I do think if West Ham are shocking at the back again, Redmond could definitely capitalise on a goal or two. And finally, Dele Alli, £8.3 million. It could look as if um, we are without going to be without Kane. He left the stadium on crutches. Don't know how serious that is. If not, need a person to step up. Janssen will probably go up front. Dele Alli have an assist this game week. Maybe he can get more. Grab a goal next coming game week. Tottenham might be worth noting. Against Middlesbrough, I feel like I can get a few goals in that one. Let's move on to the attackers. And finally, we have the attackers. Starting off... With Diego Costa, the monster himself. The most fascinating player in the Premier League to watch. He's got a good chance of scoring. He's the joint top goal scorer so far with five alongside Mikel Antonio, who I didn't mention in midfielders, but if you are looking for a cheaper option than Payet for, Man United, for a West Ham United attacker or midfielder, or attacking midfielder, or wherever, Antonio's your man. But Costa comes in, game against Arsenal. If anyone's going to grab a goal against them, it's going to be Diego Costa. Gabriel's injured, so there's going to be no fisticuffs there. Uh, but I think Costa could be set for another goal this coming game week. Ben Teke is there. Like I've said, Sunderland have you know, been rather susceptible to crosses so far this season. Ben Teke is a man who likes his crosses. And like I said, you get punching. Man who likes crossing. You've also got other wingers in the Palace, you know, ranks to do so as well. Benteke is a very good header of the ball. 
2 plus 2 equals many goals for Benteke. I'm certain of it. Lukaku comes in at 9.3 million pounds. He is facing up against Bournemouth. I feel like I get a few in that game. Bournemouth don't look as strong as he did last season. Islam Slimani comes in from Leicester. Hey, Leicester um, have a game against Manchester United. And uh, Slimani scored two goals there. Man United looked worrisome on the physical sort of side of things. And Slimani is very physical. Plus, he's also got the fact of maybe nodding on to Jamie Vardy, getting assists through there. Jamie Vardy hitting balls back into him, getting goals from there. So, definitely worth bringing him in. And we've got Troy Deeney of Watford. Now, he has scored two goals the last two games, albeit a penalty in the last game week. But, Watford do look good. And I feel that now Watford have got rid of the five hard games they were against Burnley. Deeney really could come into his own and start scoring more goals. And finally, Salomon Rondon. Um, I mentioned about maybe him not playing. It looks as if he has got the first team striker spot four starts in the last five game weeks. Well, the first five game weeks of this season, basically. And um, I'm thinking like he's going to get a few goals. West Brom are facing up against Stoke, who have been shocking at the back. So Rondon, obviously, is surely destined for goals. And that is that for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And who are you looking at? this coming game week to score the most points. Who do you think is going to? Anyone on Nasser Chadley's level? Because he's the current record holder for a points in the game week for 21. Although I'm sure an Aguero double game week will come up and he will take off the crown like he usually does. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyment. Like, comment, subscribe. And peace.